Hey guys, how you doing? JP Saricolia here and welcome again to another episode to this week's episode of Edge of Heroes, my podcast. Thank you to those who are watching this through YouTube, but also to those who are listening through the different platforms, iTunes, Teacher, Spreaker, CastBox, TuneIn, Spotify, SoundCloud, uh, so many services out there that you really um, deliver my podcast and I appreciate your support uh, for you to listen to the, what I have to say. That's the reason why we keep the podcast alive. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. But this week has been fantastic, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, of course, you know, since everything that has been happening in the world, um, it's been frustrating. I'm not going to deny it. Uh, the stuff with the coronavirus that affected us all, the stuff that has been happening around the world with Black, you know, Black Lives Matter, and the frustration and the anger and the anxiety and the worry, uh, it's definitely it's definitely has been difficult, uh, but this week has been a win, I would say for geeks at least. You know, there's a list of victory or light at the end of the tunnel for a lot of us, because it's been a fantastic week for gamers and for technically for every geek. geek because as geeks, whether you love comics or whether you watch movies or whether you do any type of geeky stuff, collect the statues or action figures. At the end of the day, we love gaming. It's part of that DNA of being a geek. Uh, you know, we've been gamers since the beginning, since I remember, uh, since the arcade days, since playing Atari. You know, we love gaming, and uh, the evolution of gaming is something that is always amazing, that we see the constant um, transformation of this industry into something totally different than what it was. And this week, is it's been fantastic. There's been so many great news, and there are really win-wins, or wins for all of us. Uh, in the middle of all the despair and anxiety and worry of this world, at least we have something to be happy about and be lo something that we're looking forward to. With, in this case, the re reveal of the PS5, but also with the RK1 up, that they, they, they released some of the new RKs. It's creating some type of discussions and arguments, and some uh, some people are not happy with the reveals, but definitely, it's, you know, I, I like the stuff that they have revealing, they've been revealing. Uh, the stuff and also with Battlefield going back to Steam. That's something that, you know, I'm happy for because I love Battlefield and being able to play on Steam again. Uh, but also there's been so many reveals and trailers and stuff for upcoming games. And definitely yeah, there's a lot of, to talk about. So this week um, I wanted to start talking to a couple of things. I'm not going to talk about everything. But we're, gonna, we're going to talk about some things that really matter to me and I think are going to matter to you in the end. Uh, first, I want to talk about Battlefield. Like I was saying, Battlefield is going back to Steam. And uh, I'm a big Battlefield fan. I love Battlefield. Battlefield 5, it's coming to an end. Uh, well, it has come to an end. It's still, you know, the, the servers are going to be alive pretty much until they stop, which probably is going to happen. It's not going to happen the next 10 years at all. You know, people still playing. And I've been playing, and on my gaming channel, I've been reviewing the new maps that were revealed. And I'm going to continue to be playing Battlefield 5 for, for years. Uh, but it's it was a little bit of a disappointment. You know, the whole ordeal with Battlefield, the way they handle, uh, in this case, EA and DICE handle the whole thing. Uh, and I think this game had the potential to be the greatest Battlefield ever. And I think it's going to go in infamy for a while until down the road some people are going to find the beauty in it. There's a lot of stuff that I enjoy about Battlefield 5. I, I find it to be superior to Battlefield 1. Of course, some people spend more time with Battlefield 1 and they're going to find it more uh, appealing to them. But to me, uh, and that Battlefield 5 uh, is superior technically to Battlefield 1. Uh, but of course, you know, when you come to compare to what people think about Battlefield 4 or Battlefield 1, uh, Battlefield 3, I'm sorry. Um, definitely, those are juggernauts. Battlefield 3 was a juggernaut. It was a game that has been improved in so many ways, but there's so many experiences that Battlefield 3 created. For me, Battlefield 3 was always better than Battlefield 4. I love Battlefield 4. I enjoy Battlefield 4. There was a superior technically, but I had more fun with Battlefield 3 because I put so many hours on it. And I would say the same thing about now with Battlefield, I would say 5. I have put more hours on Battlefield 5 than I did with Battlefield 1. So, uh, you know, in the end of the day, it's a matter of you know, your personal opinion and preference and where you stand about the certain issues. Uh, but it's been great. And now, of course, you know, they, they were part of Steam. Battlefield wasn't Steam. But now uh, they're no longer, well, they were for a while. You know, they went back to the Origins. You had to do it only directly to Origins, which was a nightmare, to be honest with you. I tried it, didn't like it. I've um, always been playing, in this case, the games on my... Um, 
on my consoles uh, because of that. And, you know, I love Battlefield, but you know, I've been wanting to play Battlefield 3 without the limitations that, in this case, the console had. So uh, now that it's back on Steam, and uh, if you go to Steam right now on the website, um, definitely they, they have a lot of the games there. Uh, they have pretty much Battlefield 5 is there. They got Battlefield 1 Revolution, which includes all the maps. And in this case, Battlefield 5, it has all the maps that has been released so far because it has the, uh, the Year 2 edition, which is the complete one. You also have, in this case, Battlefield uh, 4. And we have Battlefield 3, the premium edition, the, the one that's everything. And actually, they are in good price. Battlefield 3 is a $9.99, which I'm going to purchase because uh, Battlefield 3, I just want to go back. I, I want to replay Battlefield 3, not on the Xbox 360, that is also backwards compatible. Uh, I, I just wanted to play it, uh, you know, at the full scale that it was on PC. Uh, so I'm glad for that. But you also also have Hardline, the Ultimate Edition, also $9.99. You got Bad Company, also a great game. You got, you know, you know, So you have everything you need for to play Battlefield. You know, with Battlefield by Company, you can get the upgrade so you can play everything. You can play on PC. So now it's back on, really on Steam. And to me, that's just great news. And of course, you know, when we think about, in this case, Battlefield, um, to me, it brings so many memories uh, because I did enjoy playing the game so much. I enjoyed playing Battlefield 3. I put so many hours on that game. It was not even funny. Until well, this day, Battlefield 3 stands, I would say. Even when I play it on the console, still stands. You know, more than a lot of Call of Duty games are more recent. I have more fun, fun with it than I did with even Hardline. Hardline, I still play Hardline once in a while, but it's never been my favorite. The Battlefield 3, it's just to think about the memories that I have and on console. Not even on PC, on console with less players. It's, it's, it's so surreal. It was it was a surreal moment for me. Like playing it, it was, I don't know, it just gives me the you know, chills and goosebumps just to think about the good times. And now going back to PC, and I would say in, the, in recent years I've been going back to play PC more. Um, normally I've been, always been a console player. I've never been part of the, I would say, the master race on PC. But I've been doing more PC stuff. And... Um, and my PC can handle really good games, so I, it's been it's been good. Uh, and thinking of going back and playing Battlefield Three or even Four or any of those in there, although Four I play it on the on the on the console and it looks fantastic on console. It looks fantastic on, on the you know, I play, play it on the PS3 and on the 360, and also I'm playing it now on the PS4. So it's like you know it still it looks fantastic. I love it. So it, it'd be nice you know to see all of that um, back again. So. If you're interested, of course, I will have the link for you in the description. Uh, uh, in this case, if you're watching on YouTube or, you know, or you listen to the podcast, so you can go there and definitely, you know, dive into it. Because Battlefield 3, um, for me, Battlefield 3 or any of the battlefields, they all have some fantastic experiences. And you need to really go through them to really know the quality of this game. So it is all good, in my opinion. But also, you know, this week uh, we have, you know, the reveals of RK 1UP. Um, there was a trailer uh, that I think IGN was the one doing it. They did this reveal with all the new arcades, and of course they have the new uh, Marvel vs. Capcom uh, cabinets, and they have a Mrs. Pac-Man cabinet. So they have a few things that are really amazing. And of course, a lot of people, there was a lot of speculation prior to the reveal. There was a lot of uh, on the different Facebook groups, uh, on many different sites that were talking about it on Twitter, and uh, trying to decipher the information and see what was revealed. So, of course, in the end, the reveal was there. Uh, some people were happy. Some people were uh, unhappy. You know, there's always going to be people that they're always going to see the... Well, people see the, the, the glass half full. Some people are going to see half empty, you know. And people are going to complain. There's always two sides of the coin. And uh, to me, I, I, you know, yes, there's a lot of games that I would love to see on arcade, on the arcades. But I do believe that... Over time, you know, everything, you know, works for the good. You know, yes, they, you know, they cannot do it all at once. You cannot just have every single cabinet you want all at once. You know, can you afford to buy them all together? Can you afford to go through the whole ordeal? And, of course, there's always going to be people complaining that some things, you know, in this case, they're saying what well, arcade one up is pretty much double dipping with some of these arcades. But in my opinion, I'm okay with that. You know, it's a different setup. It's a different thing. You know, yes, if you purchase the original, doesn't mean that it's going to stand forever. I think RK One Up is not making any more money if you have one single cabinet stand. You know, standing in your room, they want to sell more for the next person. So, 
they have to keep producing. They have to find a way to change the game and change it in, in different ways. And uh, of course, some people don't like that idea. Some people don't like that, you know, in this case, you know, there are different things. Now, if you go to the website, and I will have the link in the description as well, and you can see that they have everything that has been revealed. And uh, the website really gives us a lot of information. And uh, here you can see the in the pictures you can see the new stuff that they was announced through this trailer. You see the Mrs. Pac-Man arcade cabinet, uh, very nice. Um, of course, it has different games. Some of these are kind of repeats, uh, but beyond that, uh, pretty much is, it doesn't look bad at all. Uh, as you can see, the details. If you're looking this, you know, watching this on YouTube, but it does have Mrs. Pac-Man. It does have Galaga. Uh, so it has some some. Pac-Man Plus, so Pac-Mania. So some people are complaining about some of the games here that were used. They would prefer something that has every single Pac-Man together instead of just this kind of like combos. But uh, you have to understand that that's how they pretty much make their money. They have this Marvel Pinball, and uh, I would say that uh, I wouldn't say that I'm crazy about the Marvel Pinball because definitely this is just something that they're working on with, in this case, with um, uh, Send Pinball, uh, which pretty much you can play on your PS4, Xbox, Xbox 360. So it's been pretty much, you can even play on your mo mobile device. So um, do we need this? I definitely don't understand. You know, some people might love the idea because technically it's a digital thing. They make it look like it's a pinball, but you're not really playing with a pinball. It's just digital. You're looking at a screen. Uh, to me, that's not something that I would love to have. It's not something that I would prefer. Uh, also, they got the X-Men versus Street Fighter arcade cabinet. They actually have two different ones. They have one with the Marvel superheroes, uh, and they kind of, you know, they inter, you know, instead of having something all together, they have different games uh, that uh, I think this one has everything that started uh, before. And they say it started with X-Men Children of the Atom, and then, of course, you have uh, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom, and, of course, you got this. This is the thing that I, I did really don't understand. And I'm going to go to see the full details. They have uh, the X-Men, this game, I uh, forgot the name of it, but this game that is actually only a port or a game for that was on the, if I'm not mistaken, on the SNES. So uh, this X-Men, I don't know if I can see it on the picture, uh, something about, I forgot. You know, I don't see it well there, and I don't have, you know, it doesn't look well. They don't have as much information there, but you have it in the trailer. I will have the trailer if you're watching this video. So this X-Men game is just actually from um, from the SNES or the Sega Genesis. I found not mistaken, not remember well. Uh, I don't know why they added to this. It makes no sense to play. You know, if you have arcade games, so you're gonna add an SNES or a, a Genesis game. So what's the point? I, I don't know. That's the only thing that I would say that makes no sense. But also they got the Marvel versus Capcom, that I think also includes Marvel. Uh, heroes. So it does include, in this case, I think Marvel Heroes, Marvel Super Heroes, and some other games. Also, some games based on the SNES. So, I would say that that's not. I wouldn't say that I'm crazy about that. Uh, that's one thing that I would. I'm not saying that you know it would be nice if they have one single cabinet with all the games. So yeah, that would be the perfect world. Primarily now that we are going, we're really close to the celebration. What is that? The 30th anniversary. Uh, yeah, I think it's the 30th anniversary or the 25th anniversary. I'm not mistaken. I know there's an anniversary coming for, uh, in this case, Marvel vs. Capcom uh, 3. I think it's the 25th anniversary. Uh, you know, and it's going to be a big celebration. So a lot of people are saying, why is it that they don't have this collection on the, like in this case, the Neo Geo is bringing this collection of all the Samurai Showdowns to the new, in this case, to the PS4. Uh, I downloaded for free through uh, Epic Store just um, this week uh, the version that is now free on the Epic Store for the PC. And I love it. It's a great collection, uh, but it's coming down the road. It's coming for the Switch. It's coming for the PS4. Uh, it's coming for all those consoles. I think also coming from the Xbox One. But uh, people saying, why is it that we haven't seen a collection like this on in this case for um you know for new consoles but you know I, I'm, I'm hoping that we get that reveal soon but for the time being of course this is coming there's two versions on their arcade and now some people are going to go for it some people are not happy because of course it's double dipping with children of the atom on the previous marvel versus capcom cabinet but in my opinion uh it's just a matter of taste you choose whatever is good i think that the previous one was a great uh addition i think of course this one has uh, more games besides the Punisher that I don't think works well with this one on this fighting game 
cabinet, but you know, they pick, pick and choose. Now, Big Buck Hunter arcade cabinet is coming. A lot of people are saying this out of the left field. They would prefer some other type, you know, you know, other games uh, like the Terminator games for shooters. But this also gives hopes for uh, more light gun uh, cabinets in the future. Uh, and that's a good addition. I know some people love this. If you go to many places, so many arcades, uh, many even bars, you can find them even at the movie theaters. So this is one option that some people are going to jump on right away. Uh, but, you know, you, you can see, of course, the Golden Axe ar Arcade Cabinet. That's something that we was announced before. The NBA Jam Arcade Cabinet was also announced. Another one people looking forward. The Froggers one. So, you know, and the Burger Time, of course. Uh, so there's options here, as you can see, that definitely um, show a lot of potential. And uh, I think that what we see now with our carry one one up uh, it's that they are really not only just doing things one way they are uh, adapting to 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 the market um, the question has always been how this company can be uh, kind of to be sustainable you know like every company the the question of every company is always how can we be sustainable in any market it's not about just producing one thing and just sell it you know and make a lot of money out of it and move on to the next thing uh, or you know going out of business to move on to another business or another uh, enterprise but um it is about producing uh it's about you know staying in the game by producing more and more and i think our k1 up is being smart about it now i don't see this uh something to be permanent in the long run if they don't change some of those things you know like one of them is not only double dipping into different cabinets because ultimately people are going to get fed up with just many cabinets and you know sometimes the same cabinet over and over with different you know games the same games being you know move around into different cabinets people are going to be tired of that they want to have the ultimate thing i think what's going to make this um arcade one up to be a much better option for the future or something more uh, profitable for the company and also more enjoyable for the fans uh, it's uh, when they start going into the Wi-Fi route, when they start they having their own digital store, when you're able to actually to download games into these cabinets and you can pick and choose and you can buy packs. I do believe that that's an option, an alternative. Also creating a system where people can play online, you know, against other people. Because, yes, it's nice to have somebody to play right next to you. But at the same time, not everyone has the luxury. You don't have that, you know, I don't have that many friends that come over. I personally, I, nobody comes over. I've really never been crazy about having that physical contact with many people. I love my privacy. I love to spend time at home. I love to play multiplayer online. I love it. You know, I don't have to see for you if people face to face. Not because I'm antisocial, it's just because I enjoy the solitude of being by myself. And, you know, nowadays a lot of people live like that. And particularly with everything that is happening in the world right now, uh, it's good when you have kids. I don't have a small kids. But if you want to have a cabin, it's still to remember those good old days, you know. And you can play when they come. When my nephew comes, we can play together. But also I would love to have the opportunity to play with other people when there's nobody around to play with, you know, particularly fighting games. You know, I can play with somebody else. So, uh, you know, in this case, uh, there's multiplayers like the, you know, the Tennis Between the Turtles. You know, sometimes you're by yourself or, you know, you want to play with all other people. So definitely having that option would be an alternative for our K1 Up in the future. How they can do it, I don't know. But I think they they have pretty much, they you know, have the, money, the power, the financial power right now to do it. Uh, how they're going to do it, it's just a matter of time. Um, but I do believe that that will make RK one up a more feasible uh, enterprise, a more uh, enjoyable experience, and also it will give more. It will be more a, a permanent thing instead of just being a fad of the moment. So I, I, that's how I see it. Of course, it's something to consider. But I like it. As I know, some people are not happy with what the re reveals. They want all their games to be to have those cabinets. But I do believe that those, you know, little by little, they're they're releasing some stuff like the Golden Axe cabinet that I like, the NBA Jam also. And I'm sure that there will be others. Uh, I remember I made a video on my, on my channel where I talk about my most wanted. And actually, some of them are just coming through. And uh, we'll get to see more of that stuff. You know, more Neo Geo arcades and all that. We will get to see that. Uh, only time can tell. But definitely that was great. Uh, but I think the biggest reveal, of course, the biggest reveal, and people are still talking about it. And we're going to see a lot of talks and a lot of sites and a lot of videos. It's in regards to the ps5 uh, i talk about it i actually had a live reaction on my gaming channel 
Um, I watch it, and I do believe that PS5 had, had pretty much had a home run with that one. It was a good uh, event. It was a good reveal. You know, sometimes when you go to E3, of course, you know we should be at E3 right now, but because of the situation with coronavirus, we don't, we are not there. But at E3. Um, you know, normally one of the biggest problems is that there's a lot of reveals with uh, people love, love to go, but not everyone goes. Uh, and a lot of the stuff when they do the showcase event, sometimes it's just awkward to see people being awkward. You know, it's just awkward. You feel bad for them because a lot of these people, you can see they're geeks like myself. They don't like the social interaction. So they're on stage presenting their games and, you know, they're fumbling with their words. They're fumbling with what they have to say. You know, the, you know, it is real. You know, they, they, you know, in this case, they, they get you know frozen in there you know and it's normal uh and sometimes you know they just don't look that great but definitely this was a trailer for over an hour that was back to back trailer after trailer after trailer with a lot of great reveals for so many different games and to me that was a a win-win and ultimately the trailer ended up revealing the ps5 some people love the design some people don't like the design hate the design they they say that it looks like a router, like one of those fancy computer towers that, you know, you know, they, they occupy space, but they make no sense. But the people that love it really love it. And I'm part of that group. I really love the design. I was really hoping for, I, w- I didn't know what I was expecting. You know, we saw so many mock-ups over the last year, so many different variations. Some of the things were ugly just to look at. And I was like, I don't know. But this one, actually, I like it. The design looks fancier and better suited for me than even the design of the the Xbox One X um, or the, the new Xbox One. Um, I, in the Series X, it looks better, in my opinion. Um, yes, the Series X looks good, too. I'm not denying it. They're both great. And definitely, the Series X is going to be more a powerhouse. And, uh, but I think the PS5... Uh, the PlayStation Sony really killed it because in the reveal, they, they showcase a lot of good stuff, a lot of stuff that it's really surprising and amazing. And uh, as a company, they are definitely, they, they definitely doing it. Um, they did it, you know, not only because they, they have some good trailers, the reveal of the guy, but they have some really great exclusives. They concentrate on all exclusives, something that the expert hasn't been so open to it. Of course, they've been pushing towards, you know, in this case, the backwards compatibility that to me is fine. It's something that I love. In this case, the PS5, they didn't really t- talk about it. And that's another thing that, you know, makes me consider they put puts him and put him at, at, at the same level. Because the, the thing is this, Xbox had the upper hand for quite some time. And the PlayStation needed uh, to close the gap. And I think they have done it. And now I think they're both at the same level. I think the Xbox Series X is going to be a powerhouse a lot of power the best graphics the best design but it needs cons it needs some exclusives you know to compete not only halo but it needs more exclusives uh and of course the playstation might be has less power but it's operating in a way that is also great it's really close they're gonna have better you know uh better everything graphics and all but you know you know the exclusives are going to be there and people love that you know and when you're looking at that if i go to online there's you know a couple lists i'm I'm, let me just go here to show you some of the games that um that they're part of this uh that were revealed some of the trailers that were revealed at this you know we have grand theft auto 5 which actually it's coming uh, now the version for the PS5, the Grand Theft Auto has been around five since what the PS3, the Xbox 360 was part of the PS4 and all that. Now it's going there, so the Grand Theft Auto now being part of the PS5, I wouldn't say that I'm crazy about it. It is what it is. It's going to be free to all the purchases of the console. So if you purchase the console, you're going to get it. Um, but the one that really surprised me, they continue on the trailer was the Spider-Man uh, by Miles Morales and. It looks great. Uh, and I love Spider-Man on the PS4. I haven't even finished the game. I need to. Uh, probably I'm going to uh, stream the game on my uh, gaming channel. Uh, but uh, actually, I've been planning to. But uh, definitely, this is going to be an, it's a win-win. You know, Miles Morales has become such a popular character in the Marvel Universe. And, uh, of course, ba- since the cartoon, it was popular in the comics. But then, of course, since not the cartoon, the movie that came out into the you know Spider-Verse, 
uh, definitely it was a fantastic way to bring Miles Morales to the forefront to not only the comic book geeks, but also everyone in the world. And of course, the video game is going to cement that. The fact that he has a game, and definitely they're basing on the Spider-Man game. They're using the same, I suppose, the same assets, but now they're transferring that game and changing the story and doing stuff like that, but they're using the same assets of the Spider-Man movie on the PS4, now implementing it on the PS5. And to me, that's something that a lot of people got excited. It was just the, from the get-go. That was it. But, of course, we get Gran Turismo 7. Gran Turismo has always been a perennial part of the PlayStation, so having it there, it's, you know, it's a given. Uh, we have Ratchet & Clank, Rift Apart, and I would say the trailer looked good. I love Ratchet & Clank. Uh, it's one of those franchises that I love since, you know, since what, back in the day. Since what? Since the PS? It was what the PS2, the PS3. Uh, I don't, you know. Yes, you know, it's been around for so long, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Ratchet and Clank is an enjoyable, fun PlayStation uh, franchise, and uh, now that is going to have another one. I love the trailer because the, you know you can see the ray tracing, you can see all the, the improvements, and of course we was we were looking at the trailer at 1080p, but now you can see the trailer. Um, you know, in this case, and for. 4K uh, or a better graphic design now that the trailers have been released to the public. But there were other things like Proje uh, Project Athia that looks great, Stray, Returnal, Sackboy Big Adventure, which is definitely based, of course, on the Little Big Planet. It makes making a comeback now, which I like that. Destruction All Star looks like a fun game. They got Kina, Bridge of Spirits, Goodbye Volcano High. That is more like a that's like more like a movie type of thing. Very indie film, uh, very indie game. Odd World making a comeback back after so many years with Soulstorm. I mean, look great. The graphic look great. The gameplay look great. A lot of people are excited to have Oddworld back again. Ghostwire Tokyo that was actually revealed at E3 last year, but now we, we were able to see some gameplay and the game looks terrific. Uh, Jet, The Far Shore, Godfall, Solar Ash looks also good. Hitman 3, which also is going to be part of the Xbox. But the Hitman, the trailer looks fantastic. Of course, Hitman is a perennial um, character that has been so popular over the years. Astro's Playroom, uh, The Little Devil Inside, NBA 2K21 was the only, I would say, sports game there. If you don't consider the destruction super, you know, all starts. But, you know, NBA, um, we just saw a trailer. We didn't see gameplay. But, of course, you know, you know that all those games are going to be part of the new generation, of the next generation of gaming. Uh, they got another game called Buck Snacks, uh, Demon's Soul, that is making a, really a comeback. I don't think uh, the Demon's Soul franchise had any games on the this generation, I think since the PS3 era. So seeing it on the PS5 making a comeback um, is great. Dead Loop was also showcased at E3 last year. Uh, but now, of course, it's coming back. We saw uh, some trailer with some a lot of content, a lot of video, but also some gameplay, which was good. N not as much as gameplay, but definitely that's one that I've been keeping an eye on for a while. We got a new game, that, of, in this case, a new trailer for Resident Evil Village. Okay, it came out. It really, I was not really expecting this to be. It doesn't really look like a traditional Resident Evil, but uh, a lot of people love that, and definitely, you know, it looks great. I think Capcom is doing fantastic. been doing fantastic with in this case with this franchise pragmata we got uh, and uh, in the end it ended with the horizon forbidden west which looks fantastic uh, horizon was a i would say a one of the best looking games in this generation it definitely is going to be in my opinion one of the best looking games at least from the star for the next generation so uh, definitely a lot of people are excited and i would say again that i think the ps5 PlayStation, Sony, they, they really kill it because they went after what and they know that has been always been their, their strength as a company is their exclusives. You know, it's not about just having the best hardware in the world. It's about experiences. It's about providing a, a room for experience. And that only happens with stories. And that only happens with good uh, exclusives. And uh, it, PlayStation is the only place that you can find some of those exclusives. And they are, you know, still doing it. They're still pushing towards that. And they know what the, the customers want. They want something unique, an experience that you're not going to find anywhere else. And you're finding it. And I feel that this trailer is uh, it's a good start. I would say that I was blown away because I would have loved to see maybe some other uh, games. I would love to see some, like, first-person shooters. I would love to see the next generation of shooters, how they look in this new game. Some hints towards Battlefield 6. Some hints towards the next game on the Call of Duty franchise. Or uh, some other uh, first-person shooter. Uh, of course, we have some with a first-person perspective. 
but not necessarily we saw first person shooters per se. There were a few there and they, you know, they were okay, but not necessarily to my liking what I consider like, you know, big blockbusters. Um, but also I would love to see like fighting games. So what is in the future for fighting games in this new, uh, in this new console, you know, I don't know. It's just something that, you know, I know that we're going to get to see that it was a great introduction. It didn't blow me away, but they had some great sneak peeks, and definitely uh, it really kind of not puts the balance in the right levels. You know, it really balanced things out. You know, now people are going to be concerned where they where they're going to invest the money. Uh, the money, you know, are you going for Sony or are you going for Xbox or Microsoft? So to be honest with you. I know that people are going to stick around with what they normally know. With this, I think people that love PlayStation and they have been supporting PlayStation, they're going to continue with PlayStation. The people that love Microsoft, they're going to continue with Xbox. So it really are really balanced. The only thing that can you know shift the in this the power right now the powers to be would be for xbox to in the next month i think it's in july or august they're going to have a reveal some exclusives and stuff for them to really bring the the firepower you know to bring the big cannons they need that uh, so they can really shift the interest towards then again but you know it happens now coming to the conclusion of this podcast uh it's definitely been a fantastic week i, I can say that with everything that has been revealed there's more trailers that have been that are being revealed we will continue to see more information over the weekend but um it's just amazing to see that really love what in this case the playstation 5 um i love the design you know the different ways um it's different and i like that i like different and it's bold and um, how this is going to pan out in the end, um, how it's going to sell, uh, that's the only other question. Um, there's a lot of, I would say, still a lot of doubts in regards to the power of this machine uh, in the end. You know, if the loading times, some people are saying, I, I've seen some, uh, some, some sites are talking about the loading times still having some issues with it, some problems, technical problems, that it's not going to be as powerful as it seems. Uh, but... Well, no, you know, I remember the PS3 was had also a lot of problems in the beginning, but ultimately the PS3 became a powerhouse too. And I still love the PS3, even over the 360 uh, out to this day. Um, but we'll, we'll find out, you know, we'll find out. Um, uh, you know, really, I do believe that all of this is great. It's great to really get excited about what's coming. But also it's important for us to remember that in the end, it's not about just the, the technical aspects of gaming or what's new to purchase. It's about enjoying the ride and enjoying, um, you know, what we play. Uh, ultimately, it's about having fun times and having a good having a good time. Um, I, I'm still, you know, even though I'm, it's, it's, it's really surprising to think that we're moving to the next generation, in my opinion, so soon, uh, because I still have a fun time with the PS4. I still have multiple games, many games that haven't even started on the PS4. So to think about moving to the PS5, I'm not so sure if I want to really do the, the jump right away when I haven't even finished these games. And I can even say back, to, you know, go back all the way to the PS3. I have tons of PS3 games that I never finished. I never did anything with it. I never, never even started. Uh, so, and I still have it in my collection. Um, so do I collect things just for the fun of collecting or do I collect things to have fun with them, particularly with games? Do I collect them so I can play them, so I can enjoy the experiences? So I think in the end, it's important to enjoy what we have. Uh, the same happens, you know, with this case with, you know, bat you know, going back to play Battlefield now on Steam because I had so much fun with them. You know, it doesn't matter what ne next, what, whatever, whatever comes that is new or fresh, I still going to lead to those memories of those times. And I think going back and play those games, sometimes I feel more refreshed, you know, feel more energized than playing some of the newer first person shooters. So to me, that's that's great. Um, and the same with the RK one up. So people are complaining why, you know, it did this and that. I would say just enjoy what you purchase. If you purchase the original Street Fighter or the original Marvel vs. Capcom, you still have a good game. You know, you still have a good arcade. It's a good investment. Yeah, something else might come up with some other things. You might end up selling one just to buy the other one or whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, I think it's about enjoying those experiences. The time that we spend, not only, connect, you know, playing by ourselves, but also connected with people. Whether we do it, you know, people come over and play with us to these arcades. And the same happened with the PS5. Yeah, we can jump on the PS5. And I'm going to jump on the PS5. Maybe I'm not right away. But I'm going to jump. Um just to have fun and it's about having fun you know like i'm having fun with a lot of ps4 games right now and i don't even see the need for me to change to a new console 
Uh, it's not about just going to the next best thing. I'm not gonna be. The, I'm not the type of person that waits in line to buy the next iPhone that has some better, you know, a little better camera compared to the previous one. When in reality, they're all the same. They're iPhones. They all serve the same purpose. And I'm will serve with the one I have. I don't need to buy the newest one every day. I don't need to pay two thousand dollars for a new thing when I can just simply enjoy what I have. You know, uh, well, two thousand is too too high to overpriced. But if you purchase different phones, you know, for the family, then you, you go up there. So, so what's the point? So I think more than anything, and this is the, I would say the takeaway from this podcast this week is enjoy the ride, enjoy the gaming experience. I'm excited to see these new reveals. I'm excited for the, the next generation of games that I'm going to play too, but I'm enjoying the ride and I'm enjoying what I have right now. And it's about just having fun and, you know, and living large, you know, living large in life, you know, you know living and enjoying the fruits of our labor. So, my friends, I want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. What are you excited for? Are you excited for the RK One Ups? Are you excited for Battlefield coming to Steam? Are you excited for the PS5? Let me know. Let me know in the, in the comments below if you're watching in YouTube. If you're listening through, um, you know, through the different platforms uh, uh, to this podcast, uh, please come to Facebook. You can come to Facebook, uh, or you can go to Twitter and let me know how you feel. I would like to hear your voice, my friends. God bless you. Take care. And I'll talk to you again. Bye-bye.